Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Merkel. I want to talk about Lou Gehrig's disease, also known as uh, ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, and probably one of the most famous people I had it was Stephen Hawking. And I'll read it, review it just a little bit, but I remember a couple years ago, the big ice bucket challenge, that was a fundraiser for ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, it's progressive deterioration and I want to review just some of these things. Now, at the end of this, I'm going to talk about some cases that I've had and some very nice results and give you some ideas on what you should be doing or could be doing if you have ALS or you're treating people that have ALS. But just a little review here. Um, first of all, drugs. There's been many clinical trials and medications designed to slow ALS but I quote, but all have failed. The average life expectancy for people with ALS is two to five years. However, ALS is a variable disease that progresses at different rates. Some people die within six months. It goes very quickly. Who gets ALS? Well, virtually it's more common in men, especially white men, and people between the ages of 60 and 69. There's no known cause, and ALS is not contagious. There are 6,000 people per year diagnosed with ALS in the United States. 20,000 people currently have ALS. And um, 90 to 95% of ALS have no associated risk factors and their family is not at risk for developing it. What are the symptoms of ALS? Boy, these are, these are, how many of your patients have these things? Difficulty walking, doing normal daily activities, tripping, falling, dropping things. Abnormal weakness or tiredness in your arms, legs, feet, and ankles. Hand weakness and clumsiness. A slurred speech, trouble swallowing, muscle cramps, twitches in your arms, shoulders, and tongue. And difficulty holding your head up or just having good posture. So how is, it, how is ALS treated? This is what's scary. Currently, there is no cure for ALS. Let me say it again, there is no cure for ALS. And all, this, all the drugs are for is to relieve symptoms. There are basically two medications used to treat ALS. And one was Rilutec, approved in 1995. And the only new drug approved in the last 20 years is a new one called Radicava, R-A-D-I-C-A-V-A, -A, was approved in 2017. Now, I want to talk about this this new drug because it's, it's pretty fascinating what they write about it. Again, it is the only FDA approved treatment for ALS in the last 20 years. Now, here's, what, here's the, the key point, the selling point for doctors and people was, and I quote, this is from their website, it was shown to slow the decline of physical function as measured by the ALS functional rating scale. It's an intravenous medication. And uh, now, I must tell you that this drug, it was shown to slow the decline in physical function. And they, then they quote, even though you may not feel like it is making a difference, it's an ongoing treatment, but, and I quote, is not a cure, does not restore function. It's not a cure, does not restore function. And you notice it doesn't even say it extends life. It says reduces some symptoms. I'm going to talk about that here in a second. But it doesn't say anything about extending life. Just maybe some... Uh, now, I want to talk about some side effects. You can have some severe hypersensitivity reactions. And uh, severe episodes. And uh, the most common side effects are bruising, contusion. Actually, I think I got these listed here. The common, most common... Oh, here are the most common side effects are abnormal manner of walking. Well, that's what ALS is, weakness. So it can cause that, cause bruising, cause head pain. It can also lower your oxygen uh, concentration in your blood and tissues. It can cause eczema, skin inflammation, as well as sugar in the urine. I suppose it can contribute toward diabetes, but what's it kill you first? The ALS, the diabetes, uh, some more severe uh, effects are allergic reactions, lung failure, hives, and redness of the skin. Now, I want, I want to talk about this study and um, uh, the, with the Radicava 
And they talk about on this that, I don't know if you can see this, this chart right here, but it shows a decline in symptoms by a 2.49 point difference. And, um, and then they go and show you this little thing right here, which is a, it says a 33% difference in physical function scores during six months, during a six month trip. They only did the test all for six months. They only did the test for six months. So, and in that period of time, a 33% difference or improvement, wow, or, or yeah, a difference. That's huge, a 33%. Okay, but I wanna read a little bit about where they came up with that. First of all, that ALS function score is based on 12 items. Speech, salivation, swallowing, handwriting, cutting food, dressing, and hygiene, turning in bed, walking, climbing stairs, dyspnea, which is difficulty breathing or shortness of breath, um, orthopenia, which is trouble breathing when lying down, and respiratory insufficiency. So those are the 12 things, and each of those is rated, you, if you have optimal levels in all those, you get four points. So me and you out there don't have any signs of ALS, you're healthy, you'd have 48, because 12 of these factors times four points is 48. As you get worse, the number goes down, getting lower. And so, for these 12 items over six months, the difference in the decline from the drug to the placebo was 2.4 points, which would mean their estimation was, their speech was, instead of a three, maybe a two. And maybe their handwriting was a two rather than a three. Whatever that was over six months, there were 2.49, two and a half points difference. So like I said, handwriting is maybe less a point, swallowing less a point, or the ability to climb stairs was, le was half a point off. This is insignificant. The difference to the drug at 33% over six months of two and a half points based on 12 factors rated at four points each is truly insignificant and gives people a false hope, a false idea that this drug is gonna do something for you. It's not. These are all subjective things. They're all subjective, but they're trying to convince you that this drug is gonna help. It's not. This drug does not help. This is insignificant in my opinion. Why waste your time? And uh, now, and I really believe that, that this is a more Pharmacy magic, playing with the numbers to try and make it look like they're seeing a difference when this is truly, truly statistically in or physically, in all actuality, insignificant the changes, the the changes you're seeing. And you notice it doesn't improve lifespan, doesn't extend lifespan. It says it decreases your decline in insignificant amount. One of the most famous people is that ALS is Stephen Hawking. Now, I'm going to show you a picture over here. I mean, no disrespect for him, but this is the way he lived the last several years of his life in this wheelchair. Now, he was diagnosed. Well, actually, let me back up. Stephen Hawking died on March 14th, 2018, at the age of 76. But he was first diagnosed at age 21. Wow. And, uh, but like I said, in the last many years of his life, he has been in a wheelchair. And since 83, he's had to speak through his trademark computer system. And uh, since 83, he's had round the clock care. So the question is, why has Hawking lived so long when so many people die within two to five years? Why? Well, here it is. Here's the heart of the matter. And, and this is a quote, um, life expectancy for ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, turns on two things. The motor neurons running the diaphragm, the breathing muscles. That's one of the main things. So the common way people die is of respiratory failure. The nerves going to the diaphragm that allow you to breathe stop working. 
And the other way is the deterioration of your swallowing muscles. And that can lead to malnutrition and dehydration. If you don't have these two things, if you don't have, if you're, if you can swallow and you can breathe, you can live a long time. And now, and I quote, you could potentially live a very long time, even though you are getting worse. And I think that we'd all agree that even though he could breathe and maybe swallow, maybe he had a feeding tube in air or, or whatever, I don't know, but I'm not sure that most of us would think that that's living. But he was continuing to get worse, and we can see that, that he's getting worse. So, um, is there a better option? I'm going to tell you about some cases of mine. Like, I've been in practice over about 35 years. I've seen many different things, conditions, um, ALS, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, other neurological diseases. But with ALS, and let me, let me talk about just a few of my cases and maybe it'll give you uh, an idea of what we do. Um, I had one fella come in. He was in his uh, mid-60s. He was already very advanced. And after I talked to him, I did my initial consult before I got any testing done, before I started any of the program. He passed a week after he talked to me. He was walking, but then he just probably, he was getting some deterioration. He passed quickly. Had another fella uh, who was in his uh, 40s develop ALS. But... During my consultation, I asked him if he was willing to make some changes. And he said he's not going to stop drinking his 12 Cokes a day, 12 cans of Coke a day. And he's not going to quit smoking his two packs of cigarettes a day. So I said, don't waste my time. So I didn't waste my time on him because I didn't think he was going to beat it having such bad habits. Now, one of, one of my um, uh, best friends years ago, his mother developed ALS. Now, this lady's brother was a medical doctor. And by the time he was diagnosed, officially diagnosed, in my in my friend's mother, uh, she was already in wheelchair. She wore the, she had this special uh, mouth appliance so she wouldn't swallow her tongue. Difficulty swallowing. She came a patient. We did our testing. We put her on a program, and she actually improved where she didn't need that mouth guard anymore, and she's able to walk. Um, where she didn't even need a wheelchair or even a walker, and she did very well for several months. In fact, uh, uh, she lived a year and a half, and for about a year or so, she did really well. And then she died quickly at the end. She started going getting, uh, going bad and getting worse, etc. So instead of dying in six months or less, she lived a year and a half. That may not seem like much, but my buddy and the, said he and his family were so grateful for the extra time they had with their mother. Now, the other patient was um, medically diagnosed with ALS. And told basically go and get his affairs in order because the medical doctor, at least was honest, said there is no cure. There is no treatment. And so just said, go get your affairs in order. And basically, there's nothing you can do. Uh, you're going to be basically told he'd be dead within six months. Now, he was, uh, he had some weakness. He would stumble, you know, grip strength, just some overall general weakness and some shakiness and things, uh, but not severe or advanced. We started him on a program, we tested him, and uh, we found some things correct like we did in this other lady I just told you about. And his symptoms went completely away within two months. Completely went away in two months. And a year later, he's still doing great. A year and a half, he's still doing great. I tell him to go back to his medical doctor. His medical doctor does an evaluation, sees him, and tells him, well, I guess you didn't have ALS. Otherwise, you would be dead. Didn't want to know what he did. Uh, he just said, well, you didn't have ALS because everybody who has ALS like you did would be dead. And so if you develop, if you're diagnosed with ALS, I know things may seem pretty grim and I, I don't have a treatment for, listen carefully, I don't have a treatment for ALS. Our goal is to try and keep your body from deteriorating. And if we can get it to maybe to improve a little bit, it's not that it's totally bad. Otherwise, you'd be gone within days. Your body's just deteriorating too quickly too fast for your body to keep up. All the patients that we take care of that have ALS or similar neurological problems, we do advanced testing. We do a thorough evaluation of their blood. We don't look at just a few things, but if you have any deficiencies or imbalances or organ dysfunction, it could lower your ability to heal and repair. And so we gotta find what we can to optimize everything in your body to restore your health 
so it can then go and do what it already knows how to do. Remember, it's not totally bad, otherwise you'd be gone within days. It just isn't good enough. So we're gonna try and optimize your system in every way possible. So we're gonna test the blood, lots of different things we're gonna test. Um, who knows? It may not be one thing. It may be a combination of things. You may have a little bit low vitamin D. You may be low in B12. You may have a deficiency of some nutrient, magnesium, calcium. You may have a little liver imbalance what, or, or an underlying inflammation or a, a chronic infection. Whatever it is, there's a combination of things that's impairing your body's ability to heal and repair. Now, there's also something else we're going to do. Everybody that has this ALS that I've tested, that I've seen, all has a toxicity problem. Remember, I believe it's this ALS is caused, is caused by two things, a deficiency or imbalance, something that is that, that your immune system isn't as strong as it could be because of the deficiency or imbalance on your part. But I also believe that there's a toxicity, that there is something in your environment that is toxic, a burden that may be unique to you. Other people in your environment, your family, your wife, your husband may not be affected because you're genetically different. So we're going to do some heavy metal testing to see if you've got heavy metals in your environment you're not aware of. There's even testing we can do to see if there's heavy metals going in that aren't going out. Wow. Yeah, we can actually test that way. Test things that will determine that you're getting exposed to toxic elements. And then we can test see if they're going out or not. If you have an impaired ability to eliminate heavy metals, and there's some special testing that, that I do, that I teach, that can help you identify that. So we've had very nice results with Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, in the, in the very, very few ALS cases I've seen, because our goal is not to try and cure your ALS, but to improve your health so that your body can then respond and recover and regenerate those nerves and nerve endings so that your function will be better. So think of that fellow who is diagnosed with ALS. Then a year, year and a half later, he has no symptoms. And the doctor says, I guess you didn't have ALS. That is what I hope for you. And if you'd like to check, check, check out another safe natural option, I'd encourage you to contact us or an SBN member in your area. I believe that if what I do, what we can do, is gonna help you, that you'll see change within two months. Not that you're gonna be well, not that it's gonna be reversed, but you'll see, you know, I'm improving a little bit. I'm stronger. I feel a little more stable. I'm my, my whatever, you're gonna be stronger. And that list, that ridiculous thing where they say, oh, you're just not as bad on the drug, Maybe we'll see that you'll actually start improving on those 12 factors. Wouldn't that be awesome? If you have these problems, there's no, no time to waste. You got to get moving on it very quickly. I feel bad about that fellow who died within a week after talking to me. If he had seen me immediately when he was first diagnosed, maybe we could have done something. And maybe we could have reversed it. So there you are. Get busy. Get going. If you need, uh, if you need more information, you're welcome to contact our office. I'm Dr. Merkel.